Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very, very much for tuning in. My goodness, first and foremost, well, we're going to have an amazing, amazing uh, show this evening. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I must thank, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some really wonderful people. Uh, first and foremost, Paul Bartlett. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, my Australian crew is amazing. I have the most wonderful viewers in Australia. And uh, just thank you so very much. Paul, I don't know what to say, but thank you so very much. And even before this started, already with the support, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have $20 million in venture capital funding like some people. And I don't have uh, political action committees that fund hundreds of thousands of dollars from one pack to another. But I do want to... I do want to thank the people, the wonderful people who watch this channel, who uh, help me remain an independent voice. So, Paul Bartlett, also, your, uh, your kind words, Paul, always are greatly appreciated. I, I read all the kind words that people uh, uh, send to me and all the, the well wishes and the kind words and the positivity and the good vibrations. And, Paul, yours just, it's awesome. Thank you so very much for the, for first and foremost, for just the support and the kind words always. Um, Paul, thank you. Clementine Cooper. Clementine Cooper, you are wonderful. Thank you, Clementine. Thank you. PJP72. Fake polls got to me today. I need some. Oh, don't. We're going to get to that. Don't. If you look at the swing state polls, and especially Ohio and Florida, he's wrapped up Ohio and Florida. It's smooth sailing because he might even win Minnesota. So it really doesn't matter what, uh, how many votes Biden, or it won't be Biden, it'll be Hillary Clinton, but it doesn't matter how many votes Democrats get in Florida and New York pertaining to the popular vote. The popular vote, Clinton was up by, 12 po by 14 points. Uh, Clinton was up by 14 points. PJP72, Clementine and Paul. Uh, Madam Secretary, the golden one, the golden moo moo, was up by 14 points. Hillary Clinton leads Donald Trump by 14 points nationally October 10th, 2016. Two, that was even, what, two days from now, okay? October 10th, 2016. Madam Secretary... The golden one leads Donald Trump by 14 points nationally. Did that happen? I don't, it didn't. So uh, that's CBS News, and that wasn't a CNN poll. And if you look at the CNN poll, they can't, you can't find the methodology. Simon Hathaway, Spurlock. Uh, Simon, thank you so very much, Simon. I have to, I have to actually do uh, uh, John O'Brien first. Uh, there's a reason for that. Simon, thank you so very much. So let's just do uh, my, one of my favorites, John O'Brunnen. And we'll get to William Barr in a second. The despicable, the mean, the nasty William Barr. John O'Brunnen today stated, this is about, uh, actually yesterday evening, he said, in debate, Mike Pence lied about 100 notes of mine. <laughs> this is the best. So he goes, <laughs> he goes, in debate, Mike Pence lied about hundred notes of mine from 2016 that re reference unsubstantiated Russian allegations about Secretary Clinton. So these are his notes. These were classified. They were declassified. And they are caught in the act again. They're caught with their pants down as always. Oh, I hate when that happens. And so he gets, he gets, he's really upset. He goes, follows DNI Radcliffe's politicization, release of misleading snippets of documents. Russia helped Trump and continues to full stop, <laughs> full stop, full stop. So he's caught in the act of, first of all, first of all, it's not like, okay, these are, let's read the notes. Okay, you have to understand. Let's read the notes, people. Let's read the notes. 
Okay. They got caught with their... Oh, my goodness. They were caught with their pants down. It's, it's just so, it's so funny because every time I get caught with my pants down, it's the other person's fault, not mine. So, let's just read. So, let's just read this. This is this is hilarious, okay? These are the notes. These are his handwritten notes, okay? I'm going to read this to you in my voice, and then I'll read this to you in in his voice. And the re- so these are his notes per FBI verbal request. Central Intelligence pr- be- uh, provides the below examples of information. The Crossfire Hurricane Fusion Cell has gleaned to date. <laughs> okay. Quote, an exchange, this is John O'Brien, an exchange discussing U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton's approval of a plan concerning U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump and Russian hackers hampering the U.S. elections as a means of distracting the public from her use of a private server. Why would Russia make up this very obvious and logical and <laughs> reasonable, like, it, it, the, the duplicity of this propaganda spin is very logical in, in the Democratic Party's, you know, w- in what happened. It, it is logical for a political party to want to uh, focus on another, on their direct political rival when they were caught when they're the ones when they're the ones that have a much much more important scandal so this is his handwritten notes so they knew that Russia knew that they were setting up Trump so this is this has gone beyond so Durham and Radcliffe and Barr have everything they need and it doesn't say, for example, that, like, how is this Russian disinformation? I want to know that. He is acknowledging, he is acknowledging that another country knows about Madam Secretary's plan to utilize the United States government to go after her direct political rival. This is what, <laughs> this is what it says. He wrote this. Okay, the man wrote this. The man wrote this. This is exactly what it says. If you had Pompeo saying that another country knows that that Trump is trying to set up and frame his direct political rival, what do you think that would be used to do? It would be used to impeach him for the 5,000th time. Let's read this again. I'm trying to, I speak Democrat. Do you speak Democrat? I've spoken Democrat my whole life. I know. I can interpret for you. You don't speak Democrat. This is why you're watching this channel. So in the debate, John O'Brennan, he he goes, uh, he goes, In debate, Mike Pence lied about handwritten notes of mine from 2016 that reference unsubstantiated Russian allegation about Secretary Clinton. Why would they, (laughs) why would Brennan speak to President Obama and everyone around them about a plot where Madam Secretary purchased a steel dossier, then utilized to investigate Trump. The reason he would do so is because it happened and they got caught. And even Putin knew, okay, they, okay, the Russians are masters at chess. They have chess champions galore. They know what, they know strategy, Okay, Democrats know zero strategy. Ask Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who resigned for cheating Bernie. This man is, this man is, 
General Brennan, this man is caught in the act telling President Obama, and then President Obama said, well, is it true? And then they go on and on, and they are talking about this. Initially, we were told this was not political. Now we're told, of course, it was political. It just happened the political side coincides with the national security side, which was, it was never about national security. Madam Secretary purchased a dossier with the DNC. The dossier was then funneled to liberal publications. The liberal publications then hyped it up as unverified, but my God almighty, the most important thing on the planet. It took four years for everyone to realize it's worth less than used toilet paper. Now we have the, and, and the Steele dossier was not classified. So you have to understand something. The Steele dossier was not classified. This was classified. And then you have per FBI verbal request, the verbal request from whom? Who issued the verbal request? Comey, who doesn't remember anything? Central Intelligence provides the below examples of information. The Crossfire Hurricane, meaning the Bureau officials who set up and framed, helped set up and frame Trump, but who investigated Trump, Fusion Cell has gleaned to date. So they already knew. Strzok and all of them already knew. An exchange maybe among uh, foreign intelligence services. Well, also, if Russia knew, then the entire planet knew. Then you want to know who else knew? Our wonderful UK allies. The intelligence services in the UK knew and our wonderful Australian uh, services. By the way, I love my Australian crew. <laughs> I love the UK and, and Australian viewers who watch. But the wonderful Australian intelligence services who almost certainly knew that, that the awesome and amazing Alexander Downer, Dumbo, was meeting with George Papadopoulos to set up and frame him. So the, the, the full quote is, Per, F, per FBI verbal request, Central Intelligence provides the below examples of, of information uh, the Crossfire Hurricane Fusion Cell has gleaned to date. An exchange redacted discussing the U.S. presidential candidate's Madam Secretary's approval of a plan concerning U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump and Russian hackers hampering U.S. elections as a means of distracting the public from her use of a private email server. The problem with Democrats who say it's no big deal, this is a disinformation, is that the United States government has never confirmed on its own that the DNC was hacked. The United States government utilized CrowdStrike, which, of course, was paid for and outsourced by the Democratic Party. So it can't be disinformation if, if uh, Brennan is actually talking about how another country understands that there's a plot to utilize hackers that the United States government hasn't even stated with certainty infiltrated the DNC. And then you, they would never allow this if the tables were turned. Then you have endless discussion about a dossier, which was purchased by Clinton, endless discussion about a CrowdStrike assessment, which was outsourced by Democrats, endless discussion on MSNBC and CNN by Clapper and Brennan and Comey, who are on networks devoted to, to undermining and taking down Trump. Then you have a Mueller probe, which found nobody conspiring with Russia. Then you have a journalist still bringing up contacts between Trump and Russia that were not contacts that conspired to interfere in the election. Then the most important thing is you have people who cannot, who cannot give you an example of how Russia infiltrated 
The election. Julio, you. Nice hat, H. <laughs> That's a thing. Exactly. Julio, you. And then this is the, I'm reading the Federalist, the cover note of the memorandum stated that the information within was provided to the Bureau, quote, for the exclusive use of your Bureau for background investigative action or lead purposes as appropriate. Investigate what? There is no evidence that the Bureau ever took any action to ensure that Russian knowledge of, of Madam Secretary's plan did not lead to infiltration of that uh, campaign's operation by Russian intelligence agents. Why would Russia want Trump when they already were able to get 20% of U.S. uranium capacity because President Obama did not veto the sale? Why would Russia want Trump when President Obama did not offer Ukraine lethal aid? And that was after the invasion in 2014 of Crimea, the annexation of Crimea. No lethal aid. And not only did you have an obvious plot of, of people who conspired and utilized the United States government, which is 18 U.S. Code 371, they can hide behind... This is just, look, look, they already know that Trump has, and William Barr is waiting for President Trump to go eight years. He's going to win the election. If they're so inept to go with Biden, because my prediction still stands that Hillary Clinton's going to replace Biden. But if they're so inept, she, they lose with Clinton, it gets it's closer. But if they're so inept, they go with Biden. This nonsense about 10 points, 13, 16 points up. Give me, this is the most hilarious, for, for what reason 16 points up? Because his, Biden's name is not Trump? Biden is, you're talking about, there is no exhumed body vote. There are no zombies or exhumed bodies or spirits that, you know, can vote. So unless there's like a, a, a huge, a huge voting base of exhumed bodies and cadavers that got Botox and plastic surgery, within swing states, he ain't going to win. There's zero enthusiasm for this man. Zero. And already in swing state polls, you're looking at Ohio and Florida as strong Trump, like Biden up like a, a point or two points, which is basically Biden down by five or four. The media is so apoplectic and seething and fuming and an extension of the Democratic Party. It's not even funny. So tell me how they get to 270 when they can't even get uh, Florida and Ohio. I would love to know that. Karen Hart. Do do Mr. Uh, Rod and when you can. Thanks for all you do. Oh, Karen. Thank you so very much, Karen. I just want to thank you. I, I I have to be inspired by the holy, holy Clinton spirit. So, uh, but Karen, so ver thank you so very much, Karen Hart. I just want to thank you, Karen. Thank you so much, Karen Hart. You're wonderful. And uh, you you just watch my wife is uh, that dorsal fin around Biden. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so very much, Karen. Off-world, Adam. Greetings and salutations, Mr. Goodman. Off-world, Adam. Greetings and salutations to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dragon model, they can, but they, it won't, they won't get close enough to cheat. Or they, they could get close enough to cheat with Clinton when, when she does. But generally, uh, if they are so inept, they go with Biden, they won't get close enough to cheat. Um, off world Adam, thank you. Karen Hart, thank you. L or JBJ, come on. A joint show with you. I would love to. Tim Pooley, you can call it the Beanie Boys. <laughs> the Beanie Bro <laughs> JBJ, hello. JBJ, hello. Thank you. Would love to. Would absolutely love to. Uh, I watch Tim Pool every day, and uh, he's fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic. Um, there was a fantastic, um, 
There was a fantastic show on Brandon Tatum today with Anthony Brian Logan and Jericho Green and Brandon Tatum. It was awesome. And those, those three gentlemen are amazing. And I've been watching uh, these YouTubers for a while, and they're awesome. Jericho Green I was watching a long time ago. He's fantastic. And he's, he's awesome and intelligent and hilarious. So, and and so and Anthony Brian Logan is fantastic. Brandon Tatum is fantastic. So, and that all three were on a conference today on uh, Brandon Tatum's channel, I believe. And he was just awesome. Uh, JBJ, thank you. Simon Hathaway Spurlock, not today. <laughs> uh, not today, Nadre. Not today. You can tell your friend down below. Uh, the uh, print, uh, the anachronomicon, and not today. Um, there is no evidence the bureau ever took any action to ensure that Russian knowledge of Madam Secretary's plans did not lead to infiltration of that uh, campaign operation by Russian intelligence agents. The Central Intelligence referral, specifically its re reference to a crossfire hurricane fusion cell, suggests that the Obama, President Obama's administration's anti-Trump investigation may have been limited to the FBI, but it may have included the use of central intelligence assets and surveillance capabilities, raising troubling questions about whether the nation's top spy services were politicized against the U.S. political campaign. Of course they were. Of course they were. Um... Then he goes, that doesn't ring any bells with me, Comey claimed under oath. And so so he doesn't bring any bells. So, so the Central Intelligence Referral, by the way, Haspel and Radcliffe at this point don't even need Christopher Ray. They already have all the information they need. And in, almost certainly, almost certainly, the other intel agency has every one of the emails ever written. By anyone in the uh, in the U.S. government, so the goose is cooked politically. Their goose is cooked politically, and so that's why I say I cannot see Biden going and losing this in in monumental in a monumental manner. Okay, the the Madam Secretary at some point is going to replace Biden. My my prediction stands. I do not see them, I do not see them, ladies and gentlemen, giving up, giving a man who's lost his marbles and his one fry short of a Happy Meal, the keys to the White House, becoming the most powerful man on the planet. See, they, um, they tried to paint Trump as this inept buffoon. He really, he is a very intelligent, um, politically savvy, very intelligent, um, very wise. He possesses wisdom. That's why his foreign policy is opposed by the Lincoln Project people. Trump possesses a great deal of wisdom. He's not a di diplomatic career politician. He doesn't care about stepping on eggshells or, you know, he's like, a, he's like a bull in a china shop and it's fantastic. That's the reason he was elected. And when people say, oh, um, oh, look at what Trump is doing, all of these norms, all of these norms, it's like um, that is exactly why he was elected because he is tearing apart these norms. The protocol is not something that people revere. People do not revere business as usual, and they every single time you get this, these these foreign policy experts, these foreign these intelligence service experts, these these career prosecutors, these career government employees, every single time you get every single time, every single time that you get a. A, a, a letter signed by 500 career politicians, 500 federal, employ, 500 federal employees who spent their life getting paid 
to just simply uh, engage in, in failed foreign policy interventions like Libya and Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld's foreign policy. People vote for Trump. They do not want, they don't care. They don't want business as usual. They don't want business as usual. And that's, that's, that's the funny thing. That's the funny thing. Aaron Paradiso! I think Joe Rogan is fantastic. I think Spotify, I don't understand why Spotify employees or why Spotify would be doing this. They, they're very lucky to get Joe Rogan. Very lucky. The only reason I'm even talking about Spotify is because of Joe Rogan. They're very lucky to get Joe Rogan. And I have no clue why this is like a big deal. Like, and they're, gonna, they're going to lose with all of this. They're going to lose with all of this. Um, like the, this, the, like Democrats have pretty much the entire media on their side, and especially social media. So I, I don't, I don't get it. You knew that. You knew that you were going to get the world's number one uh, political or just number one podcast, number one YouTube channel when it comes to anything political or anything um, like, like any topic. It's the number one show. So Spotify knew that it was getting the number one talk show on the planet. What what is the like what is the issue with um I have no clue what the issue with Spotify employees are. I have no clue. The only reason and the only reason I'm talking about Spotify is because of Joe Rogan. Aaron, thank you so very much. Anthony Andrea H.A., what grounds will Pelosi have to invoke this 25th Amendment? Her Baron Biden or Octogenarians. Who is testing that? Exactly. Anthony. They are anything, Anthony, Andrea, thank you. Anthony, any, any, oh, Valerie Rogers, zombies can vote Democrat. (laughs) Valerie, thank you. Anthony, it's just, it never ends. It never ends. It never ends. It never ends. So, They have been trying to utilize the 25th Amendment because President Trump has warped their brains. They are now pretending that being testing positive means that you can't you can't function. He's on the ropes. Uh, they they're just they they have obsessed over this man in the most unhealthy manner, and it's frightening. Anthony, I'll tell you something. I'll tell everyone here, all 700 people. I don't want to talk about. Things that are not YouTube policies. It is frightening. And God bless President Trump. These people are maniacal and nefarious. I'll leave it at that. And they would wish for nothing more than something, God forbid, serious to happen. They are dangerous, maniacal, fanatical, apoplectic, seething, fuming, and... They don't have a foothold or a grasp on reality. President Trump is at worst a president that they disagree with. He is, if they want to say he's a bad president, they can say he's a bad president. When you go to destroying the country, ending democracy, ending the republic, ripping apart the constitution, you've entered into... um, Maniacal, hysterical, apoplectic mode. Where when you lose the election, because even I can't believe the election is less than a month away. And they're riding high, sitting pretty. And they're doing the same thing again. They never learn. Well, the polls show Biden. Biden, there is no reason why any poll should show Biden up. He doesn't do anything except... um, say the most absurd, outlandish, bizarre things because he's an exhumed body. 
that's being brought to life by uh, one of the demons in my other Yushanka hat. I have these uh, Oni mask, uh, Oni mask, uh, awesome, awesome embroidered Oni mask um, images on my other Yushanka from, from today's show. By the way, I don't know if you if anybody saw today's show, but um, Biden is the worst candidate of all time. <laughs> he is the worst candidate of all time, and this is not happening. So, Madam Secretary is going to replace Biden. You watch. It'll be the biggest political call of all time, or I'll have a good, very good, excellent political call. Excellent. President Trump goes eight years, and the media melts down in the most apoplectic manner. Anthony, thank you so very, very much. Freen, happy hello. R.R. Zachman, 57 years since Kennedy and nothing. So we aren't going to see anything about Trump, Russia, Clinton, so we are long, long gone. It'll be history note. You know, R.R. Zachman, I think that, um, Keith Youngblood, hello. I think that, uh, I, Carolyn, hello. Dragon Model, hello. I think that R.R. Um, Zachman, I think that, We are waiting. William Barr is going to be waiting um, until after the election to really, really do um, to really, really get into the Durham probe, John Radcliffe's declassification, to really get into all of this. I don't think he's going to risk like his political life until like, William Barr is very methodical. And I do think that a lot of things are going to take place. But again, um, one thing about JFK, do you want to know who was on the Warren Commission? Alan Dulles. That's very interesting. Um, I would uh, love, I would love to speak to Jesse Ventura one of these days or interview him about what he thinks about Alan Dulles being on the Warren Commission. Okay, uh, the man who began Central Intelligence Agency. So, um, would love to. The, the fact that he was on the Warren Commission pretty much says a lot, or all all that you need to know. But um, would love to get Governor Ventura, Ventura's take on that. I would absolutely love to get that. By the way, if anybody wants to be part of a newsletter, it's it's. It's contactgoodman78 at gmail.com. So contactgoodman78 at gmail.com. Um, obviously, Oswald, it, not saying that, I'm not saying anything. I'm saying there's something, there's probably so much more to the story, but I would love to get, um, I would love to get, um, Governor Ventura's take on why Alan Dulles was on the Warren Commission, which basically backs up everything uh, Jesse Ventura has been saying for so long. R.R. Zachman, thank you. When he was in it, when he was the one time he said, well, I'm just a patsy, that is, <laughs> that, and then Jack Ruby, nah, that's a little bit weird. Uh, Christ light. Christ light. Australia, Australia followed America into wars for decades, and now Aussies are ready for peace with President Trump. Exactly. Yes. World War II, uh, Vietnam. Uh, thank you so very, very much. Yes. Australia is amazing, and I agree with you. Christ light. Um, I agree with you. Uh, the Korean War, I agree with you. Um... Christ light, yes, yes, thank you so very much, Christ light, thank you. Um, Paul Bartlett, thank you again. Paul, thank you again, Paul. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated, thank you. So, um, this is interesting. You have a situation where, let me read you. The Federalist, uh, okay, so this is DNI declassifies handwritten notes from John Brennan 
2016 Central Intelligence Referral on Madam Secretary's Campaign Collusion Operation. On Tuesday, Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe declassified and released to Congress handwritten notes from John O'Brien, as well as a Central Intelligence investigative referral to James Comey and Peter Strzok requesting that they investigate Russian knowledge of Madam Secretary's anti-Trump collusion smear operation. So, the narrative that they're trying to spin now was, well, of course, the, the, of course Putin knew what eventually was going to take place regarding Clinton trying to paint Trump as Russian operative because he was a Russian operative. So instead of saying, instead of, instead of <laughs> acknowledging that, yeah, all like the Russians knew about their plot, it was, well, of course they did because, um, because uh, Trump was working with Russia, but there was no evidence ever. There was never any evidence. <laughs> so, which leads back to, okay, if there was no evidence, if you found that nobody conspired with Russia, if you fi- found that nobody can even explain how a Facebook ad or how the DNC email swung voters because they're going to lose again. They're going to lose again. I want to really quickly, I want to really quickly, you know what? Um, I want to really quickly... Um, give you some swing state polls. Okay, this is Ohio. First of all, the polls are meaningless. Uh, but you just, the, the polls that reflect that President Trump's going to win, <laughs> those make sense. Uh, the polls that are 16 points up are pure public relations. But even the polls that say Trump's going to win, at this point, you, look, there is a groundswell of support for President Trump. There's a silent majority, whatever you want to call it. Media does not reflect reality. Media reflects the desires of um, the intelligentsia of this country, the intelligentsia, the smartest people in the room, the the uh, intrepid Washington Post and New York Times reporters, and the morally superior people at CNN and, 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 and MSNBC and, and all the wonderful liberals who can't stand President Trump and view him to be a danger to humanity. The, li- the media reflects... The, those desires, the desires and the sensibilities more so. The media is a reflection of the sensibilities of people who cannot stand President Trump because they are trying to remake society, politics, foreign policy in their own warped, bizarre image where a word, if you said a word, or if you, let's put it this way, if you're rude and belligerent and boorish, that's a bigger threat to U.S. national security than... Uh, turning Libya into a failed state or leaving Americans off into never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts. But you look, ladies and gentlemen, and just look at, so the RCP average, if you want to just go by the polls, um, if you want to go by the swing state polls, which were off, uh, which, which were showed that Trump was going to lose, but he still won. And and he still won. He still won. Um, even when it, and it came to polls that where he had, he was like five, six, seven points down in Wisconsin. But this is Trump versus Biden in Ohio. The New York Times poll has Biden up one. Uh, Trafalgar Group is Trump up four. And CBS News, Trump tied. These are the latest polls in Ohio, okay? Oh, you cannot win without Ohio, all right? You cannot win without Ohio. So just go to 270 to win, and you look at um, you look at Ohio, that's 18 Electoral College votes right there, 18 Electoral College votes, okay? You ain't going to win without Ohio. Okay. Uh, I actually only believe polls that are Trump affirming. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the reason why. Because the r- reality is independent of the polls. Reality is that there is so much support for President Trump that if 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 there's a poll that actually reflects this, I'll I'll look in I'll look at it. Um 
I don't believe like the, the aggregate of these national polls have nothing to do with the Electoral College. So I just think that if you look at the swing states, the only polls that count are Ohio, Florida, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nevada. And so, and Arizona is going red. North Carolina is going Trump. So that's, you know, that's, a, that's like a fantasy of Democrats. But you look at Ohio and it's Biden up 0.06. This is with media. Like you have to understand, Trump is like Usain Bolt running a race 20 yards behind all the other competitors, and he still wins because the media is an extension of the Democratic Party. These polls are reflective more of media, media spin than they are of what people truly feel about Trump. That's why they lost. That's why the polls were off so horribly. That's why they were so horribly wrong in 2016. But you look at Trump versus Biden in in Ohio, 18 electoral college votes, 18 electoral college votes. And Biden up point, um, point six, which is basically uh, Biden down by a substantial amount, okay? Because if Biden is, is not up by like four or five, it's not even, e- it's not even in my view. And this, the, 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 the margin of error is a number that they just pulled out of their behind, you can't have polls that say Trump is down 16, then Trump is down three, and then use the word margin of error. But Florida, so Ohio, he has it in the bag. They can't even cheat in Ohio. Uh, I believe Ohio has a Republican governor, but uh, Trump versus Biden. Okay, Trump in the latest poll is up three points. Okay, so, and he won Florida, and um, you have DeSantis, and you have... Uh, Rick Scott, so and then you have Rubio. So it's, it's run by Republicans. Um, the latest poll has Trump, and then you have, I mean, Trump would be up if you didn't have like a Quinnipiac poll, which is like skewed towards Democrats, up by 11. So that's 29 electoral college votes. Mr. Mandela! The poll in my house has Trump with 100% of the vote. Exactly, Mr. Mandela, thank you. Mr. Mandela, thank you so very, very, very much. As always, I hope all is well, Mr. Mandela. Thank you. So you have, what, 37 or 47 electoral college votes right then and there. He's just He goes into the game with that. And, of course, they show, oh, it's toss-up. It's, it's a toss-up. Or it, it, it barely leans Trump, barely. Okay. So, so you go in, so you go there. And, and then they have Arizona leading blue, which is really hilarious. Okay. Um, that's bizarre. They are still thinking, because Kristen Sinema won last second. Um, the governor is a Republican. You already have a Republican senator uh, in... Um, you, ha- you should have two Republican senators, but... Um, you have... Uh, Kirsten Cinema, who won last second, then you have Martha McSally, but she won based on a recount. She barely won, and they say, "Oh wow, you know, it's going blue. It's not going blue." But again, here, so you have Florida, and oh, that's forty-seven electoral college votes right there. Okay, now let's look at uh, Minnesota. Okay, they don't even if they win Minnes if if Trump wins Minnesota, he doesn't even need. If everything remains the same, he doesn't even need uh, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, or Wisconsin. But even then, he's still competitive. Even in those places, he's still competitive. Then you have Minnesota. The last one is Biden up six. Okay, Minnesota is a deeply blue state that's been completely wrecked. It's the epicenter of what took place. Okay, George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis. 
just like Eric Garner in New York City. These are Democratic-run machines. Mr. Mandela, thank you. Wow, thank you so very much. Mr. Chu, Mr. Chu, Mr. Chu, thank you so very much. Mr. Chu, thank you. Missed the two simple paintings in the background. My friend, you've been watching for a long, long, long time, and I thank you so very much. Mr. Chu, thank you. I'm just going to say Mr. Chu, because, or it's Mr. Chu. I don't know exactly how to pronounce uh, the name, but thank you so very much. I used to, ladies and gentlemen, have two, two little paintings behind me, and uh, this gentleman has been watching for a long, long time. I just want to thank you. Thank you so very much for watching, and thank you for the kind uh, words and your support. Uh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Mr. Chu, thank you. Um, thank you so very much. That these th those are like really awesome. Like people who've who've watched for so long, I just thank you. I can't thank you enough for dealing with my uh, wacky personality for so long. Thank you, Mr. Mandela. Thank you. So, so he's supposed to be down by a lot, and he's only down by six, and the average 9.4, because, of course, ABC News, Biden's up 16. These averages, without, you take away the 16-point filler, the 16-point padding of, like, statistics here. This is absurd. 16 points among, among which voting demographic exhumed bodies? For what? What has he done that he's 16 point up? That, that just, he's just not Trump, so he benefits. What, is, what has the man done? What does he stand for? Nothing. They're making things up that he stands for. Oh, yeah, he's a good person. No, he's not. Ask Tara Reid if he's a good person. Trump was never accused of what Tara Reid, never accused by anyone. They spent more time on a hot mic talking about the accus of, 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 of a theoretical accusation. When he was talking, when he actually brought up the, it was a bizarre statement, but he brought up consent. But anyway, it was very bizarre. But it was, it was a hot mic with no correlation to reality. Tara Reid has literally accused Biden of exactly that and much worse than what was stated. And of course, they're not covering, this is another reason, media the polls reflect media, and media does not cover Biden. They are, they are protecting him. They are holding him like, like a newborn, um, like a tiny newborn um, quail, like a, just a, a fluttering little. Hush up, hush up, please. And they're they're not even reporting on anything that this man does. They're not they're not reporting on him. Mr. Chu, thank you so very, very much. Mr. Chu, thank you. Anthony Andrea! Anthony, thank you as always. Um, H.A., what is the continued gaffe around the Harris administration featuring Joe Biden? Biden said she's ready day one. Who is, who is top of the ticket for transparency purposes? Why can't Biden admit he's stacking the court? Well, um... In terms of the Harris-Biden administration, that whole thing, uh, I think that that was a slip of the tongue at first by Biden, whose tongue is all over the place. And I, I just, the whole thing makes no sense because neither of them have any true authority within the Democratic Party. It doesn't, they don't make any sense. It, it, it doesn't make, none of this makes sense. That's why I'm expecting Madam Secretary to just, I mean, to, to replace Biden because Biden would lose. Without a shadow of a doubt, he would lose. He has zero support. And the public relations polls that say he's up by 16 are fantasies. Clinton had, okay, Hillary Clinton is a, m a million times better than, than, than Biden. I would worry if it, when it's Clinton because she will replace but, but, uh, Biden. But um, in terms of stacking the court, Anthony, 
they talk a big game. They do not really want to do that. They can't do that. So they talk a lot, but they can't do that. Just like they can't do a whole lot of things. So, Biden does not want Medicare for all. He does not want a Green New Deal. He does not want to pack the courts. He does not want to abolish the Electoral College. He does not want to defund police. He does not want to abolish ICE. He does not want to ban fracking. He wants nothing the left wants. And Lincoln Project support Democrats. So why would you vote Democrat if you are this person that really wants to change the world on the left? You're not, you're just, at this point right now, you just want to fit in. If you're on the far left and you just, you can't stand Trump and you're so worried about Trump and it's like, at this point, you just want to fit in. You just want to fit in and you don't want to actually try to uh, remake the Democratic Party because you can't do so from within. It has to actually lose this election and very likely the next election. Anthony, thank you so very much. I don't think, Anthony, that they want to do any of those things. I don't think they want to. Uh, they, they say they will pack the courts. They say they will. They don't truly want to because they know that they can't, just like they know that they can't get two-thirds of the House and two-thirds of the Senate for um, – they can't get two-thirds of the House and two-thirds of the Senate for a constitutional amendment. They're all talk. They're all talk. Uh, the fact that, see, there's the sentiment of what they should want and what they would actually engage in. They're definitely pandering to the belief that, to, to the left, saying, oh, yes, we will pack the courts. Uh, they, they don't want to, though. Anthony, thank you, as always. Cass, C-A-S, Cass, thank you. Harris does not know what to do. Never match the tone of the conversation. <laughs> Cass, you know what it was? Democrats always have this, this, this view. They always, they always think that if they paint Trump or Pence as, as the most weird, bizarre interaction, like they always have to have this view like, what? Like Jonathan Swan. He's interviewing Trump. He's focusing on one statistic when he should be focusing on what Trump was – the statistic Trump was talking about. You can't focus on percentage of population when you have the seven out of the ten uh, t uh, states with the highest per capita fatality rate as run by Democrats. So New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Michigan, all of these states, Connecticut, all of these states have the highest per capita fatality rate. Then Jonathan Swan focuses on uh, fatality rate as a percentage of pop or fatalities as a percentage of population. Well, you have to you happen to have Democrats presiding over the most dangerous locations and regions pertaining to fatalities and the pandemic. Obviously, that's going to um, move the aggregate uh, rate up in 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 the in, for the country as a whole. If you have 15 people running a mile and you have five people running five minute miles and 10 people running a half an hour miles, obviously uh, the overall number is going to look like nobody's in shape. You still have five, you, you have five, you have five people who are world-class uh, track athletes. And then you have people who are running half an hour miles that they need to really work out. So you have 50 states and you could take the top 10 states in terms of the worst um, the worst uh, fatality rate per capita they'll they'll be te they'll be majority democrats so democrats are the places with the worst outcomes are run by democrats so why do we have to always listen to them this is what i don't get but jonathan swan makes this like he makes this what what oh my gosh they always try to make trump into this otherworldly like ogre this this man that they can't relate to it's like well you're going to that stick is not going to work when you lose again see when you lose again democrats <laughs> it's i'm not we're, like 
Trump supporters, everyone on this channel, whether you're progressive or most of the people are conservative, but like I'm, I'm a person that is not tied to a political party. Establishment of Republicans, the Lincoln Project people are even worse, in my view, than uh, most of the Democrats. But most of the Democrats love the Clinton Project people, so they're both, they're all horrible. But this kind of like, what is Trump doing? Like this, this, this hilarious little uh, game that they play. Oh my God, Trump is at it again. What's he doing? What's Trump doing? Oh my God. Oh my God, it's Trump again. I can't stand this man. What is he even talking about? What are you talking about? This whole thing, this whole shtick. Oh, it's tr what's Trump even talking about? You lost twice smart person you lost twice very smart person so do we have to listen to you again you teach you lose the super bowl twice you lose the uh the grudge match twice and then you talk again these people don't know what losing means they don't know what losing a contest means when you lose in a sporting event you generally don't give lectures on how to win I don't want to I don't want to hear a lecture on how to win from a person who hasn't won the sporting event that people want to win. The whole point like Michael Jordan before he became the greatest player of all time or if you want to say one of the greatest but the greatest player of all time kept losing to Detroit. He kept losing to first I mean lost to Boston, lost to Detroit. You can't win unless you find out why you lost. You can't win unless you find out, you know, if you, unless you um, refrain from acting in a manner that will lead you to lose. You have to continually look at life and whether it's a sporting event or life or anything, you know, and say, okay, uh, that didn't work out. I have to change my course of action. Will Carter! I'm ready for Trump 2.0 for 25000 Will, thank you so very much. Um, <laughs> the media will... Um, the media will definitely have... Uh, a nice little, uh, a nice little reaction on election night. Will, I'm not into the uh, the uh, message board thing. I'm very outspoken against it. But Will Carter, I agree with you 100% regarding the media. The media, Will, is just going to. Oh my God, it is going to be the most apoplectic, seething, fuming, hysterical, fanatical. Um, entity you are not going my god i don't even know how they're going to react because every trump supporter on this channel every trump supporter on the planet is going to vote and they're going to vote early and they it's like it's like they're so excited they're so enthusiastic there's no support for biden like there isn't there isn't a faction of conservatives that don't support Trump. The Lincoln Project people are completely irrelevant to the Republican Party. They are now Democrats. They are not Republicans who are like noble uh, dissidents uh, from the conservative movement. They are Democrats. They found a home. They will continue to have that home in the Democratic Party. They will never again... Okay. They, the Republicans will never again engage in Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld foreign policy because it tanked the Republican Party. That is how pres that's one of the reasons President Obama won. Okay, one of the reasons President Trump won is because he was able to kick the Lincoln Project people to the curb. The interventionist regime change foreign policy, which is the most dangerous issue we face as a world. More dangerous than climate change. Much more dangerous. 
because regime change interventionist foreign policy could lead to a nuclear confrontation, could lead to, nev- does lead to never ending counterinsurgency conflicts. An immediate loss of life, an immediate quagmires where you're, st- you're spending 20 years and thousands of Americans losing their lives and hundreds of thousands with traumatic brain injuries and hundreds of thousands with PTSD and hundreds of thousands, what over 1 million have been injured of the 2.5 million Americans who served in these conflicts that, start, that, that Bush started and President Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, continued and added on to with Libya. But if you look at Michigan... You have, you have a very bizarre, you have Trump up one, the Trafalgar group is Trump up one on September 20th, and then suddenly it's Biden up nine, Biden up eight, Biden up eight, Biden up ten. How does that work? If these polls are, like, it's the sa- it was the same type of thing in 2016. It was the same type of thing in 2016. You had the same, you had the same dynamic. You had the same dynamic. And you have Representative Debbie Dingell, who's a Democrat, who said, my goodness, we're, uh, I don't trust the polls because the same thing's happening again. It is lucrative for these polls. Okay, these companies make a lot of money. A lot of money. CNN's 16-point poll wasn't conducted by CNN. Will Carter, thank you. Thank you, as always, Will. Be here, Will Carter. Um, um, Tony Andrews, thank you. Um, be here, Will Carter, November 3rd, and everybody. Anthony Andrea, be here November 3rd. You know, November 3rd is going to be amazing. But these polling, if you ever look, I tried to look today at, um, oh, and by the way, they're all skewed. They find more Democrats than Republicans. All of these polls have, the majority of the polls that show Trump down by 15, 16, 10, 12, they have more Democrats than Republicans, and I then they have like 40 questions where people are on the phone answering 40 questions. What kind of person is going to be like, ring, uh, hello? Yes, CNN? Sure. 45 questions? I'm not doing anything. It's 2 in the afternoon. Nothing. I'm not doing anything. I have nothing to do with my life. Nothing to do. Yeah. The trusted news and name? Yeah. An automated? Yeah, I'll just press buttons for 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. Go ahead. That is a Democrat who would do this. Trump supporters don't do this. They're busy with life. Democrats are like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no problem. That's why you get these polls. If you're spending, if you're spending a half an hour on the phone, you really don't like Trump. You really don't like Trump. Who does this? Are you that bored with life? Was like tumbleweeds like <laughs> like floating by you? Are you that bored with life that you have nothing to do? That you can answer 45 questions from CNN, the trusted news and name? You don't have anything better to do in your life. You have nothing better to do. Nothing. You don't have anything better to do than to answer 45 questions about how how horrible. Then they ask questions like, how do you think, well, with everything going on, how do you think Trump's handling of the pandemic was? Well, media has blamed Trump for everything. Everything, yet Democratic-run states are doing the worst by far. This is a fact. The worst in terms of per capita uh, numbers and the worst in terms of aggregate numbers, which are two separate uh, separate um, uh, statistics. Democrats are doing worse by far. 
And it's like, it's like, and yet they still, they still get to uh, pontificate all the time. So, Will Carter, thank you. PJP72, what would media talk about for the next four years if Trump actually lost? Dems are touting their amazing early mail-in uh, ballot turnout. You know, I was watching Liberal Hive Mind is fantastic. And in terms of the ballots actually sent, Republicans are, are in terms of ballots requested, Democrats are leading. But in terms of ballots actually mailed in, it's Republicans. So, PJP72, yeah, I mean, they wouldn't talk about anything. They wouldn't talk about anything. PJP72. Um, it's like their, their entire lives are President Trump, which is an unhealthy fascination. I mean, you cannot devote your entire life to disliking someone because of their personality. That's it. it that's, all they, that's really what they don't like. They pretend it's about, oh my goodness, his policies. President Obama had worse policies. Worse. General D! Morning. Uh, thank you, PJP72. Thank you. General D! Morning, H.J. from your Brit fan in Austria. It'll be so nice to see Biden fade into obscurity after Trump landslide win. You know what? We're going to win. Hopefully, it's a landslide. I don't know if, it, if I, I think it could be close. If it, well, it, it, when Madam Secretary um, takes over for Botox, be the exhumed body, uh, it could be close. But um, I agree with you. Uh, it's going to be amazing. They will. They Biden definitely will just you know stumble into the sunset. <laughs> uh, he'll have to be led to where the sunset is, but. Um, Kamala Harris will still be um, will still be there as you know as you know a pretty uh, high ranking official or you know politician within the Democratic Party. But General D, thank you so very very much, General D. Thank you as always. Cash. The media needs Trump to win, or they will go broke on MSM. Exactly. Um, they don't know how to actually engage in any journalistic endeavor against their own side. You have these you have millennial liberal democrats who are journalists on the side. Their main their main focus in life is just making sure Trump doesn't win. Um Pennsylvania, Trump is doing a lot better than people think. Emerson poll shows Biden up five. CNBC showed Biden up four. And then, of course, Quinnipiac showed Biden up 13. So it's like, I swear to God, like, you have a situation where you have a situation where Biden is, like, barely defeating Trump in a state that hadn't voted Republican since the 80s. With a Democratic governor who basically told everyone he's going to cheat. He's like, well, we, don't, we won't know who wins Pennsylvania until the day after. How do you know this? How do you know this? Well, we're going to get so many uh, absentee ballots. Oh, so you're saying you don't have what it takes. So you're saying you're going to be overwhelmed. Is that what you're saying? What is his name? Wolf? Is that what you're saying? They're so happy about being overwhelmed with ballots. It's like, well, if you're overwhelmed and you have so many ballots coming in last second uh, and you watch, you watch when those ballots le lean towards Trump or like barely go Democrat, they're going, oh, my God, oh, my God. It's like the polls didn't matter. The polls were wrong. So you have Biden up five in Pennsylvania and they're touching themselves in ecstasy because Biden's up 16 at CNN. Well, who cares? If he's up five in Pennsylvania, if he was up five nationally, they'd be uh, pooping bricks. But they're not smart enough to realize this, but they're the intelligentsia. Nevada also, I'm telling you, Vegas is suffering. Uh, I, I've, read, I've read that the casinos and 
uh, people like this. That's that's a that's a state that is a business oriented state. They want tourism, they want business, they want uh, a flow of money, they want travel, and the shutdown. That, that, you know, notice that. Uh, Kamala Harris and Biden don't want to say, talk anything about a mandate or shutdown, economic shutdown, even though they've stated, yeah, we shut it down again. They're always so hilarious. They're always like pretending that uh, they really care about uh, the um, – they really care about the safety of people, which is why they're trying to uh, evade President Trump. From, from debating. And, and this, see, this is the thing. Everybody knows, see, they think that, they think that Trump is on the ropes. If you look, I'm, tell, I'm showing you the swing state polls. Florida and, and, and Ohio, Trump is doing fine. Exactly. That dorsal fin ain't flipper. It's Madam Secretary. Why aren't I able to eat Biden? And that'll happen. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Rusty Islander. Um, will the Democrats circumvent the Electoral College? They'll have no choice. They'll have no choice. Scorp Target. Hello. Hope all is well. Hope all is well. Um... They'll have no choice but to abide, just like the dude in um, The Big Lebowski. Love the, how many people love The Big Lebowski? I love, can't tell you how much I love The Big Lebowski. I love The Big Lebowski. Great movie. Um, amazing movie. And then I'm looking at Colorado, for example. It'll probably go blue. But Colorado is Biden up 10. Now, Colorado is usually, let's see. Um, Colorado. I'm not saying Colorado is going to go Democrat. What I'm saying is I'd like to see when was the last time Colorado. When was the last time it went Republican? So let's just see. Two thousand and four. So, so. I, I, it would be interesting to see. There's like no, there are no polls that I can see here. Let's see if there's a, okay. Um, let's look at Colorado. Trump. So, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, let's see. There's like, uh, you know, Colorado, Colorado will go Democrat probably, but here, I just want to see Gallup favorability. There's a great. Favorability by state polls. So, this is interesting. So, why am I? Oh, my God. Okay, so. Okay, so let's look at this right here. This is interesting. Yeah, 
you look at the favorability rating of President Trump, and this is, sorry, sorry, tr uh, percentage Trump approval. Pennsylvania has a 42%, 42%, Trump has a 42% approval rating in Pennsylvania. So this is a really interesting poll here. This is a Gallup, sorry, this is an interesting set of data or statistics. Torkel! Torkeling! Good morning from Norway. What's the latest news in this drama called US <laughs> Tiny by Popcorn? Oh, yes! Yes! Torkeling! It's just fantastic. Uh, we're getting ready for the um, Democrats to, um, to to hear the screeching and um, the apoplectic reaction to President Trump for eight years. Because they're not... First of all, Clinton is going to replace Biden. I'm still going. I'm, my prediction stands. Torkel, Ling! We're, we're heading for eight years. Torkel! Please be here in November and tell everybody in Norway, please, to be here in November. I would be honored. To, to, my Norwegian crew is strong, just like the Australian crew and the UK and everybody watching. Nor I would love to have my viewers in Norway like you, Torkel Ling, definitely party with us in November and all throughout October, obviously. Torkel, thank you. This is so interesting. This is State of the States, the Gall Gallup State of States. So this is a, this is a poll, or this is a, thank you, Torkel. This is a, my New Zealand crew is strong also. Thank you. Bo Bundy, 007, hello. This is a Gallup. Um, Gallup has approval rating based on states. This is fantastic. And it's like, I think that Trump could easily, can, I'm not expecting Trump to win Pennsylvania, actually, but I think he could win Pennsylvania. I'm not expecting him to. I'm not expecting him to because I'm, I'm like really like getting ready for Pennsylvania for people there to cheat, the Democrats to cheat. Because the governor was like, we're not going to know for at least 20, 30 days after. Okay, just get used to it. This is really, really interesting. So Trump approval. Um, let's look at, so you have Ohio at 45%. Like they, they, this is hilarious. You have Ohio at 45% approval. Are you serious? That's not bad. I mean, you have to understand also anything above 40, anything above 40, anything above 40, in my view, with media, with the, me the way media is, with the way media is, anything above 40, he's, he's doing fine. Because media has painted him as the cause of everyone suffering. And it's so, not only is it dangerously inaccurate and deceptive and pure propaganda, but he's a good president. This is why he's going to be reelected. But here, Florida, 41% approval. Wisconsin, 41% approval. Pennsylvania, 42% approval. Iowa, 43%. Ohio, 45%. Ohio, 45%. Um, so this is really interesting. Virginia, he's actually within striking distance in Virginia, actually. And this is funny, too. It says nationally, so nation, <laughs> so nation, you have... 38% approval rating, according to Gallup. You want to know why it's a 38% approval rating, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go into it. Vermont. Ah, Vermonters always lead the nation in Trump deranged. Vermont has 26% approval for Trumpy. 
Thank you, everyone in Vermont. Uh, Massachusetts, 27%. California, 29%. Hawaii, Maryland, New York, 30%. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Illinois, New Jersey. So these people, these states are not going to vote Republican. So what does it matter? They could have 0% approval rating. It wouldn't matter. Mr. Mandela, run a poll right now on for Trump to for Biden. Mr. Mandela, I, you know, I would love Mr. Mandela. You're awesome. I would love to, but I think it actually um, messes with the stream. I don't want to, you know, be a wet blanket here, um, a party pooper, but um, they have like, YouTube has bizarre, um, YouTube has bizarre policies, or I should say very wonderful policies that should I love to adhere to. Um that if like if if you have a whole bunch of like I think like people putting a number or an emoji or whatever it's like a bad thing, but Mr. Mandela, thank you so much. I apologize. I, I hate to be a party pooper. Uh, it's just you know it's some algorithm thing. Thank you, Mr. Mandela. Thank you, Mr. Tag applied for dropping by. Just want to say Trump twenty twenty. Mr. Tag applied for. Thank you, Mr. Mandela. Thank you, Mr. Tag applied for. Thank you. No, Mr. Mandela, thank you. Thank you so very, very much. It's just, you know, YouTube. Um, wonderful policy. So wonderful, 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 wonderful. Mr. Zag applied for, thank you so very much. Be here. Be here, Mr. Zag applied for in November. It's going to be awesome. Torkeling! Torkeling! Peace Prize when it will be announced in two hours. I highly doubt Trump will get it. The Norwegian team deciding it's corrupted would have would have been fun. Oh, my God, it would have been. It would have been. Could you imagine if he gets it? Oh my God! But you're right. Uh, I agree with you, Torkel. I agree with you. Uh, very cool. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna. Everybody, you know, check out who won <clears throat> the Nobel Peace Prize. Nice, Torkel Ling. Thank you so very much for letting us know. Thank you, Torkel. Thank you. Thank you, Torkel. Um, this is really interesting, ladies and gentlemen. This is really interesting. So above the nation, you have Texas at 39%, which is bizarre to me uh, because he's going to win Texas easily. But you have Nevada at 42% approval. Wisconsin, if, so every swing state, and this whole thing, well, you need 45% or 50%. It's like, this is Gallup. Anything above 40% to me is considering you have to talk you have to always take into consideration the media that is devoted to trump to undermining trump devoted to saying he said both sides he said it is what it is he said everything these are all um these are all things that aren't true the media just pumps nonsense into the airwaves Um, Michigan, 40% approval, Arizona, 41, okay, Arizona, 41%, Florida, 41%, Wisconsin, 41%. So how is Wisconsin, um, above, so these are all above the national approval rating, um, Maine, 42%. Nevada, 42%. Pennsylvania, 42%. Iowa, 43%. Ohio, 45% approval. Ohio, 45% approval. Then you're getting into red states here. Missouri, Kansas, 48%. South Carolina, Utah, Louisiana, Nebraska, Alaska, all 50%. 48%. Tennessee, Kentucky, Montana, Alabama, Idaho, Oklahoma, South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming, West Virginia. So, Nevada at 42%. It's interesting. If California 29%, Nevada at 42%. So, so, um, North Dakota 57%, South Dakota 54%. So, And the obviously the approval the Democrats have if you can look at the you can look at the lowest approval ratings have the highest unemployment have the highest numbers 
of lives lost because of the pandemic, the most property damage, to, now it's $2 billion, over $1.4 billion, and run by Democrats. So what do you expect? The job approval is more a reflection of Democrats running their states than President Trump. It's unbelievable, too, because they don't realize there's a separation of powers. Trump can't decide, can't do what, it, what can't, um, President Trump cannot tell any governor what to do. He cannot tell a governor what to do. So, <clears throat> and consistently, if you look, like up until like a day before the election, Trump was down by five points in Michigan, five points, around five points in Pennsylvania, around five points in Wisconsin. So these swing state polls, not only are they inaccurate in terms of being geared and, and skewed towards Trump, I mean towards Biden, but all of these polls nationally don't take into account the fact that <laughs> the, the Rust Belt states, the Midwest states, Wisconsin, Pencil Pennsylvania has a 42% approval rating of Trump. 42%. And I think that <laughs> they're going to try their best to cheat in Pennsylvania. Like they cheated De uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was cheated. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign. <clears throat> um, look also I was trying to find actually initially the favorability uh, ratings so favorability by state oh morning consult yes that was the favorability by state this were updated what Wait, the heck? Oh my god! Oh my god! And I'm like, okay. So he had positive approval ratings, and he only had a negative. This is interesting too. This might be a snapshot that would be relevant. He had a negative five approval rating in Minnesota, which is not bad when you consider that he has a negative. He had a negative twenty eight approval rating, and negative twenty in New York. So that's interesting. Pennsylvania in a negative one. There is so much more support for President Trump than people think. It's pretty unbelievable, too, because this is going to pretty much end the liberal paradigm, the very bizarre and warped liberal paradigm that says Trump is the end of the universe. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. Um, this will be the second time that I called an election because I'm – look. Yes, my obsession has been Clinton replacing Biden, but let's just say assuming it doesn't which would be very bizarre because why would they want Durham and uh, Operation Legend and William Barr and Radcliffe to do a number on all of them? Because Biden is, in, is going to limp to defeat. It's, he's going to not walk into the sunset after this. He will stumble and bumble some, somewhere near the sunset. They'll have to direct him towards the sunset. But... I've say, I, I called the 2016 election in 2015. I'm telling you, NPR quoted me. The link is below. Telling you for four years, the President Trump's going to win. He's going to win again. The national polls are absolutely meaningless. They are absolutely meaningless. They are absolutely, absolutely meaningless. And it's only, it's, it comes down to like five, seven, about seven states. 
Ohio and Florida he has. It, and then after Ohio and Florida, if he wins just one or two of Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Virginia is in play. This is don't understand. There is no room for error. There is no margin for error in the Electoral College for Democrats. They can't not win. Oh, it's like Ohio and Pens- the Ohio and Florida lean Trump. So I would be very frightened if I would if I see the Electoral College like we're going to abolish the Electoral College. We're going to abolish them. We're going to abolish. They keep saying they're going to abolish the Electoral College. They're going to really try to abolish it after this election because they're not... Okay, President Trump isn't going to win the popular vote. You, There will never again be a Republican that gets enough votes in California or New York. You're just never going to win the popular vote. We don't have a direct... Uh, a, a, we don't have... We have a republic. We have an Electoral College where states are taken into account. Okay? We don't have one person, one vote. That... When, that's just we we've never had that. So I don't know why Democrats are like, oh my god, this democracy, this democracy is a republic, and we don't have one person, one vote, and the popular vote is ske- skewed and geared towards um, an idea. But you already have Florida and Ohio. That's like the that's that's like the meat and potatoes of everything. You got Florida and Ohio, you have the meat and potatoes. So you already have You already have the main course. You cannot there is a zero room. There is zero margin for error. You have zero margin for error. Zero. You must win. So this is Democrats they, they've already given up on Ohio and Florida. They must win all Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. They have to win those four states. If President Trump wins one of those states, he's, he has it in the bag. If Trump wins one of those states, he has it. Even if, he, if, if everything stays the same, he loses. Uh, go do the math. If everything stays the same and he loses um, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin and he gets Minnesota, he still won the election. So PJP72, two-thirds to abolish the Electoral College. Exactly, never going to happen. Exactly. And you're looking at he can get Nevada. He could get Nevada this year. This is not, people are always, people are going to vote on the economy, and we had employment. Also, Democrats are horrible in every way. And Biden, everyone says the man is one, one fry short of a Happy Meal. So if everyone is saying he's one fry short of a Happy Meal, everyone on the planet knows this. The, the, the thing with Democrats is that they, they truly believe that you can have you can have anyone and it's better than Trump. So they're in the, the, the derangement is so profound that they'll take somebody who's obviously one fry short of a happy meal, obviously losing his marbles. Bright and Spartan. When Trump wins, do you see a possible Pence Rand Paul 2024? Um or possibly someone from the Trump family. Uh, also, thank you for the amazing work, H.E. Thank you, Brayden. Thank you. I I like Rand Paul a lot, him on the national stage. I like Rand Paul a lot. He should have, he should have the ability to go into 2024 as, you know, the person uh, that Republicans go to. I just, I going to have to step up the the charisma he's going to have to step up the uh dragon energy that trump has i don't know what to say pence has okay pence can be a very viable candidate very viable 
if if he he kicks the Lincoln Project people to the curb like Trump did. If he doesn't, then he has no chance. Uh, thank you much. I mean, honestly, at this point, I'd vote for Donald Trump Jr. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, compared to the Democrats, any Democrat, I would vote for Donald Trump Jr. who knows how dangerous all of these corrupt intelligence officials are and uh, the Lincoln Project people are. So absolutely. Absolutely. Braden Spartan, thank you so very much. Braden, thank you. Everyone here, Paul Bartlett, my friend, thank you so very much. Uh, your kind words, your, 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 your wonderful words all the time mean a lot to me. Thank you, Paul. Uh, everyone, thank you so very much. Wonderful, wonderful um, live stream. We're approaching two hours, heading towards two hours. I'm running out of steam. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very, very much, people. Uh, be here tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific. I have a 1 p.m. Pacific every day, 1 p.m. Pacific and uh, a 9 p.m. Pacific. So you got 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. So I'm, I've stepped it up to two uh, live day, one at 1 p.m. Pacific, and another in the evening at 9 p.m. Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless to my super chat. Thank you so 